Hey guys, it's Mono Making Time. I'm not going to be doing a mask intro today. We're looking at Milton Keynes, so let's get into it. So I'm off to Milton Keynes for the model show. I'm so excited. Well guys, let's have a look at Milton Keynes Model Show. I'm so excited. The biggest single day show in Europe. And I've tried to get every club that I could get in. So let's have a look into it. We're starting off here at Chelmsford and this was a really lovely display. A lot of variety involved. I loved these little dioramas. Excuse the camera work, it's the first time using my new camera for this. But yeah, I really loved this display. Um, it just, it had a lot of variety. It was right next to the door and it had gaming related content. I love these dioramas, I just can't get over them. There's pretty much all of them feature Japanese tanks but the variation between each one is just so extreme that it's it's, it's honestly quite quite inspiring really <laughs> i wish i could do dioramas anywhere near like they're doing with these they're just yeah and i love that tank I, i've seen it more than doing it's just it's literally just like a boat with tank tracks it's amazing i just ugh, it makes me giggle so much these two f5s look gorgeous as well and yeah this is the centerpiece and i can see why it just it looked stunning honestly just and the rotation speed was like bang on like next to this we did have some other aircraft as well though so like this f5 this Takado, and this meteor that which really popped off against the blue background like i don't think i've seen a meteor in that bright yellow ski before it looked really really amazing overall great stand to start with we're off to training aircraft sick next and uh, I mean anyone who knows me knows I love my training aircraft so it was a real delight to see this as the second stand that we walked into today and uh, yeah there's the uh, the blue impulse T4 there and then a standard one it's an alpha jet and that's of kinetics old markings and the variety of this is again absolutely great it went through all eras of jet training and you're about to see the centerpiece as well which was really <laughs> like wow it's like a sea of yellow which again yellow is like quite standard for training colors bolton is next of all um and yeah bolton looked absolutely awesome i loved the hornet there as well it, it just looks so great the Eiffel phantom now looking amazing as well and this camera was huge I, I can't get over how huge it is at birmingham we see one of the fastest hunters you'll ever see in a model show and yeah, it just it made me giggle how much it was rotating. But we've got a lightsaber and um, the thing from Fantastic Four and a cute little lightning. A couple of training aircraft and VC-10s. VC-10s obviously very close to my heart because my dad used to fly in them. So I always have a soft spot for them. And there were two on this table uh, along with that T-95 you saw a moment ago. Some pretty standard aircraft like a P-40, a Hurricane. Let's see what VC-10, it just looks so cute. <laughs> And uh, this train, I have no idea about information about the train, but it looked amazing. And then this uh, Typhoon, I think it's Typhoon. Uh, but yeah, so here's the VC-10s in a bit more detail because they were my favourite, so I took some pictures of those. Um, I need to use the flash on my camera next time though because uh, the, light the lighting wasn't as good as I thought it was <laughs> in the venue. Okay, and here we are at Chiltern and uh, I love that, this place. It, again, a lot of dioramas. They seem to be very diorama heavy, this ice one is my absolute favorite um on the on this uh club's display it just looked it just stood out like you never see ice done very well and it was done fantastically so i i was really really happy with that i just like seeing like the extreme environments you know like desert and sort of snow i think are really hard to do and uh, i don't know the artist's name or the modeler's name but they absolutely nailed it so congrats to whoever it was did that you did an amazing job there was this navy section as well here that I just thought looked really, really cool. Uh, they've got a Seahawk there as well and some US Navy aircraft too. Uh, you can see a little high call in the back as well. Oh, I say little, but you can see a high call in the back as well. Uh, all of them had these like plinths, which these are obviously quite standard really in modeling now, but I think they look great. These two quite unique dioramas here. So uh, this, this is the first one. This is my friend Anna's favorite one, uh, which was called Lost um yeah it just looks really good and here's, here's the one i love the most i just thought this looks so different so beautiful and here's the uh, lost again it just it's stunning honestly so our children we're off to clacton and uh, this is their stand again a few dioramas standing out there 
uh, it get looking pretty pretty damn good honestly I'm I'm quite impressed with every everyone at this show just put so much effort into it I just thought the centerpiece was the three aircraft there obviously the pink tank stood out to me massively <laughs> and I had to just zoom in on it because you know pink <laughs> so just being a bit of a girly girl there absolutely massive tiger there uh, incredible size next to this hind which I again got a picture of because it again really stood out to me I love the hind I love the check schemes that they've done on them so we're off to Norfolk now and uh, yeah starting with some Luftwaffe aircraft this Heinkel in particular looks great in this paint scheme uh, against the sort of normal sort of drab olive scheme that you would normally see. Ready Yanks diorama there as well. And we've got a couple of dioramas again in this display. It seems like they're becoming more and more common, which I'm really, really happy about. You get this last stand one here as well, which looks fantastic. Anna, my friend Anna again, who was there, absolutely loved that one. My favourite one was this... Uh, 19 I guess 1946 style one that you've just gone past but we'll see it in a moment um, with one of the famous projects of Luftwaffe Germany that never came to fruition was was absolutely fascinating just I, I obviously I'm glad the war ended but I would just wish someone had made that aircraft fly after the war because my god it looked awesome this is the US Air Force um, sort of SIG and it features no aircraft, it's support vehicles so I can't name any of them but I thought it was a really interesting display, a very unique layout. I've, I don't think I've ever seen sort of an Air Force SIG like this where it's sort of looking at the support aircraft, uh, aircraft support vehicles. Off to Hornchurch now, um, in my opinion this had one of the best uh, displays and we'll see why in particular at the moment there was one section of this that I thought was absolutely stunning. I love these magic stairs of course I've just built the uh, Silver Swallows one myself so uh, this one is done significantly better than my one <laughs> however. There's a little Mr Bean car there which I thought was really adorable and this is what always stands out for me for Hornchurch's display as these minis. As minis from loads of different films, loads of different franchises I could not possibly name them all but yeah we've got a lot here uh, both old and sort of newer you can see Doctor Who there with the Dalek I really wish I could make an army of those Daleks they look so cool especially oh I wish there was the Doctor Who type of game honestly it would be so good and yeah there's there's a few things here that I didn't even realize with that until they were pointed out to me obviously this massive future armor figurine at the back as well and everyone's favourite from Red Dwarf 2. This was one of the ones I didn't notice at first, which was from Hot Fuzz. How spectacular. Now there was some troopers, well there was actually just a Star Wars theme running throughout the whole event, so we'll see some more of that later on as well. Right, off to West Suffolk now, and this had this Polish F-16, which you've just seen now, that really caught my eye. The Spanish F-18 looks spectacular, and of course we've got Ukrainian aircraft, which prominent throughout this year's um, show for obvious reasons that Ukrainian style tornado I just thought was really cool as well I just didn't take a picture of it unfortunately but at least I got it in the video uh, but yeah this this Polish uh, F-16 in the tiger scheme is what really caught my eye on this display I don't know why but it really did all right now we are off to Gloucester this is one a bit closer to me sort of birth town just notice the dog on there oh my god it's so cute they had all these iron in there um i'm not sure if these are from a tabletop game um because obviously these are quite modern compared to what i you'd normally see in something like bolt action so yeah not sure what they were from but they looked awesome there's that's a star wars that's an atst style creation i don't know if you can see it in the back as well there's like a little egg plane <laughs> i think it's a Japanese F-15 eggplane but yeah and they had these sheep all scattered around for kids to find and if you found all the sheep they gave you a chocolate it's a really clever way to entertain children because a lot of children get dragged here by their parents perhaps unwillingly some of them obviously like the hobby but I just thought that was a really engaging way for you know how children look at the displays without being necessarily into aviation and for some reason I thought I took the camera at this hawk Great, so we are off to the Early Risers Club. One of my standouts uh, for this year, they had, again, fantastic variety from 
dark Eldar to this like egg ship, which I don't think I've ever seen before. Uh, they had some space stuff that you'll see in a moment, which is my favorite <laughs> model on theirs. You can see it just coming into view there now. Uh, this is like on an egg planet. I thought it was amazing and it's an egg space shuttle. Like, oh my God, it just, it really, really was it just tickled me it tickles me and it still tickles me now as well some world war one aircraft here uh world war one and not my strong point but they look amazing and this display i thought was really well built some armor class again not my strong point but you know you're getting the idea of how truly varied this display is honestly it's, it's it was one of the most varied displays that i were in my my humble little opinion. This little Dalek as well. <laughs> Look how cute the Dalek is. Oh my god. And then, yeah, we've got the egg planet, which I just thought was stunning. I just couldn't get my eyes off it. After the early rises, we are off over to Coventry and Warwickshire. And I think these guys are based at the museum, maybe? I'm not entirely sure. I think they are. I don't know I've been to a model show at the Coventry Air Museum, so I, I think they are based there. They had a lot of figurines that I was really impressed with, um, like these Roman ones that I just, I don't know, like classical era stuff just seems to always look fantastic, especially done by painters who can bring them to life like they have in these. It's just, yeah, they were the standout pieces for me on that display. It's again, no events for anything else. The whole stand was amazing, but I just loved that display. And there's obviously a halo, one of the, I think it is the largest he helicopter in the world, actually. Uh, but yeah, it looked absolutely incredible. It's just, it really helps show the sheer volume of it when you can see things like a B-17 next to it. It just looks absolutely surreal. <laughs> we are here in Cleveland and there's a Victor right in the middle and you can see my nail just <laughs> coming into the camera again. Can you see it? I have no idea what this was. I probably should have asked. It just looked like a giant sort of submarine or spaceship but it was cool <laughs> someone probably will let me know in the comments what it was and i'm probably really ignorant of not knowing they had a lot of star wars stuff there as well and it all looked amazing i love stormtroopers yeah they just look so good a little digimon in the back as well there gundam i i don't know gundam at all i know it's really popular in modeling these days i really need to get into it some eldar or El is it eldari they call them now um, but with some jet bikes and then I can't remember what they're called they're not Pathfinders are they? Rangers? I can't remember and again some sort of busts and figures that looked really stunning and the uh, the one on the horse uh, in particular looked just so lifelike I loved it over here at the Tornado Special Interest Group if you hadn't guessed already, it's a lot of tornadoes um, and it's in Luftwaffe, Italian and RAF. It seemed to be a lot of RAF in German though, if I'm sort of remembering. I don't think there was a lot of Saudi ones. I, I think Saudi markings tend to be less common in general in boxings of the tornadoes. So that's not too much of a surprise, I suppose. This one was in a, uh, I think this is 148 scale also was in one seventy second scale as you can see further down there which I just thought was really cool seeing sort of both scales next to each other it really gives you a sense of perspective I mean that could have been bigger now these ones we're going to talk about these metal ones in a moment because they're not painted that's actual metal it turned out again I didn't quite catch the name of the guy who made them but basically there's a lightning and I think that was the shorts test bed and apparently they basically just got like a some sheet metal and just cut it to size and did all the rivets and everything um i think this one may he said he the guy who did it wasn't quite there but they said that they think he well he wasn't there when i went but they think he basically just either covered a model or he scratch built it and did all the rivets and everything himself it's it's that's why it looks so metal like because it's metal <laughs> like what the actual hell it looks so impressive that's real true mixed media modeling there and i just i had to keep going in because i was just like wow this, this looks stunning and it it does look like a model kit but at the same time it it's metal <laughs> it, it, 
I, I don't think it shows as well on video as I'd like to because it, it was honestly one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. Uh, just because I don't think I've said this was that Barnet, by the way. I think it was a Barnet, if I'm remembering correctly. But yeah, just that was one of the stars of the entire show, in my opinion. I don't think it looks as time consuming as it perhaps was. And these tank bulls, or whatever they're called, um, are definitely going to be sort of the trend of 2022 in modelling. I've seen some started coming at, I think, the end of last year, and I've just seen so many of them at the show this year. It's not a bad thing, it's just everyone is doing them now, which is, you know, modelling has trends like any other hobby, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it was a really good, good table, really good spread of things, so we're over to East Midlands Model Club now, and uh, starting off them. Greek Mirage, or Hellenic, I guess, Mirage in a zero. Again, a lot of dioramas. They seem to be spreading, and I'm, I'm not mad at it, because dioramas are always really impressive. They take a lot longer, again, than just building models. Again, classical era, really what took my fancy here. These Romans being attacked just look <laughs> absolutely spectacular. And again, sand. They just, oh, honestly, it, it's it doesn't show in the video, it's breathtaking. Uh, that helicopter in flight as well, I, don't, I didn't get as much footage off as I wanted, and that Horton as well, but fantastic layout, honestly. And this is uh, Mafva, I don't know how you actually say it. It's basically um, military vehicles. I think it's Military Armoured Fighting Vehicle Association, or Armour, and Armour maybe? can't remember but yeah this is the Cambridge one there's a couple of these you're gonna see throughout this video um I don't know anything about tanks <laughs> anyone who's watched any of my content before knows that I know nothing at all about tanks so be prepared for me to just sort of either go that looks pretty or that looks nice because I genuinely know don't know tanks at all this is actually the second Mavva which was um Northern Home Counties so yeah, they were they were right next to each other. They looked great. There is another one coming up still that we'll see. But yeah, I thought I'd just distinguish them. Right, we're off to Milden Hall Model Club now, and we're opening with this B47 strategy out, which looks fantastic. I always think it's basically just a swept wing uh, first version of the B52. And I really like this. I can't remember what it was called. Um, it's like a missile launching car thing great descriptions by myself as usual on anything that's not an aircraft <laughs> and uh yeah we've got some civilian aircraft here as well the first sighting i think we've had of this during the show so far so my one weakness in aviation modern is fine but world war ii and before i do not know japanese aircraft to save my life so forgive me and uh, much like at telford the japanese sig is fantastic I know the names of nothing because I'm not great with Japanese aircraft, sort of before the jet age. I know that uh, either T2 or F1 at the back, but that's about it. Oh, and the Kawasaki C2, I think it is as well. But yeah, Japanese aircraft, not my strong point, but fantastic display. Not quite as good as the Telford one, but they didn't have as much room. Turkish Delights here, which is a Turkish themed <laughs> SIG, obviously. And this was really cool. Um, I don't know why, but in this country, I guess Turkey isn't probably the most prominent, uh, particularly, I guess, because they weren't really involved in World War II as much, so they're not probably as popular as they could be, but p models are quite prominent. They do a lot of Turkish kits, and I mean, this was a really interesting table. I really liked the layout. I thought it was really cool colours. I think it would have been sort of cool if they had Solo Turk there, because... I really like the F-16 and Sailor Tech colours, just secretly. <laughs> okay, we are off to Suffolk Mantha, and uh, yeah, another great display. This one I, I think was just cool because for someone like me who knows nothing about <laughs> tanks or anything, having some little flyers like this where it just sort of says what it is, I think was really, really handy. And this was one of the smallest ones I've ever seen. So this was ASBC. I think these were wild. <laughs> I mean, there's Viling for like the Luftwaffe and sort of joined uh, Mustangs was common, but the Lancaster just looks insane. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is an Akano plane, which is a Russian project. Uh, it's built like a sea skimming aircraft. See so a blue impulse 
uh, grab there as well looking really swish we're heading over to the association of london modelers the sign was fantastic i loved that this was here it looked a really great way to sort of wow people into your stand i thought it looked fantastic a good amount of variety here i love the bolt and pull defiant of course in the nine fighters colors which looks great a couple of tanks again not my strong point and we've got this i think this is an avia is it by b534 if i remember correctly ships again not another one of my strong points but i just wanted to try and show as much variety as i can i love this can't quite see what the aircraft is it looks sort of like Junker's design um but just it's so cool you can just imagine people in this era just flocking to aircraft like this rovers leicester modelers now and this was a really interesting display <laughs> this night looks spectacular by the way again it doesn't the camera does not do it justice this however <laughs> gigantic iceberg ahead for titanic stunning whoever thought of that you are a genius you have my heart and soul you are incredible the rest of the tank under the tree there again something i didn't zoom in too much on but i thought it looked amazing and probably some of the first sort of fully based ships we've seen a little ukrainian section here as well which really poignant you know, at the moment you know um we've seen a, there's a lot of ukrainian stuff throughout this show which i don't blame anyone for putting out there IPMS Leicestershire here, right next to Leicester. Don't know if these clubs are related at all. Um, I don't know about the histories, but it's not uncommon to see several um, different model clubs within the same sort of county. So probably two entirely separate clubs. A lot of prototype aircraft here, particularly that Handley page, which I've seen at the front, testing the Crescent Wing, I thought it looked awesome. A Saudi display typhoon as well, which I've never seen before, but I thought it looked stunning. I can imagine that next to the Saudi Falcons display team and they'd look awesome. So yeah, another really fantastic, colourful display. Glad we're getting so much colour these days. This is the Army Aviation SIG. I think it was a SIG. And uh, yeah, this is again, another really colourful one. I love the training aircraft in black and yellow. They look fantastic. And this goes through all eras of army aviation, so it's a really mixed display. There are a lot of helicopters, as you'd probably expect, and they're again something that's not necessarily the most common thing at model shows, so it's good to have a lot of representation there. This is what we ended on, which is a lot more modern, perhaps, looking than the rest of the display, but this is my favourite one off the table. Over to Rutland now. And you can already see how varied this is with a buccaneer and a towel sort of mech in the background and a Ukrainian flanker at the front. So really varied one here. This, however, the Milka Junkers JE-52. <laughs> I've seen it before, I, I swear. I swear I've seen this before. Who knows, maybe it's in my Telfa video, but I can't. I couldn't stop looking at it. I honestly just did that for just going, wow, this looks great. I love it. <laughs> because it really does it looks fantastic and this warrior on the back of an elephant again also stunning missile defense systems and then we're over to the tower which i took some weird footage of for some reason and this nhs hawk display from Athens, which i thought again looked great over to scandinavia now with the swedish and finnish six these are at talford um they had a lot more room i think here than they did in Telford, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, but they're next to the Danish sig we'll look at in a moment, but together they just look amazing, don't they? I mean, such a beautiful area of Europe in aviation, so just really glad to see these guys back again. They add a lot of variety that's greatly needed. This Danish F-16, I just always think looks great. And that F-84 at the back, just flying over the trees, approaching to land, just looks spectacular. I don't know which one of the three I like the most. Probably a bit more biased to Sweden in terms of their own indigenous aviation. But it was nice to see the feature of Denmark there with the F-35 and the history with these dragons and the F-16, of course, that you've seen on their display as well. So it was a really good variety in history of Danish aviation. The only thing missing there seems to be a, a Saab supporter, which 
I may or may not have one to do in baby blues display scheme, so we'll have to see on that. Took a couple of pictures that didn't come out particularly ideal, but it helps you visualize them a bit better. Okay, so we're heading over to the Yorkshire Black Sheep Modelers, their logo, which looks so cute. They've got a really varied display as well, a lot of cars, which I know nothing about cars, but they looked really shiny and pretty and lovely. I understand a lot of people use actual car paint on them, which is how you get the finish as well, which I never knew until one of my uh, viewers, Sarah, pointed it out to me. F111 there, an intruder, and this lightning, but it looks so great on the mirrored surface. But the future of the typhoon there as well. A little gnat poking its head through too. The Cold War egg was really packed. It is what it says in the tin. It's Cold War Aviation, baby. Um, and it's from every side, whether it was sort of the USSR side, whether it was on NATO's side or in between. It's just got everything from that era. So it's a really varied stand, to be perfectly honest. That little L29 there. With its uh, nose popped out. <laughs> Probably the table with the most nations on, potentially. The uh, Cold War sig there. Right, we're over to Film Fangs. Get it? Film fans, film fangs. <laughs> but yeah, this is a really cool uh, table. I, I, again, love when they try and bring in as much variety as they can. And there's some like, of the really bad sort of, I think it was 60s War of the World film on here as well that you'll see in a moment. But yeah, I, I love it. There we go. Oh my God, look how bad it is. <laughs> the Jetsons as well. This this made me smile. Undoubtedly made me smile. There we go again. World War II. Like so, like the models look good. It's just I, that film is so bad. And then here we have the mystery machine with Shaggy and Scooby at the helm, and it just looks adorable. This is DLM, and DLM designs, from what I get over here, um, it's basically 3D printed. What the actual hell? It looks amazing. <laughs> so we have some baby Grokus for sale there that were uh, crocheted, which looked awesome. Now, this is over at the sci-fi and fantasy table. Another one that always makes me smile, whether it's <laughs> minions like you see here, Star Trek, as you can see going behind it, Doctor Who right at the back there, and then there's UFO, which I've seen these for sale a lot, and I think they look fascinating. Again, genuine World War II projects, actually, to build sort of UFO-style um, airships. The scene from The Mandalorian, when they're probably on one of the many side quests because The Mandalorian is just Skyrim in real life. A dragon looking fabulous and pretty. This is the Airfix Sig, so as you can probably imagine, a lot of Airfix <laughs> models on here. Uh, the bases I thought looked really cool when they've got the nations underneath them. I thought that looked really unique. I've not really seen that too much before. But yeah, this is a really cool sig. Very, very packed. Obviously trying to get as much on the table as they possibly can. Don't blame them. You get very limited table space. And if you've got a big sig, you want to get as many people on as you can. It went through the entire spectrum of uh, ethics from its very early beginnings to where it is today. A lot has changed in ethics now in terms of what they produce. Nowhere near the variety of what they used to. Seen us go past Captain Scarlet there, and I couldn't resist getting a little snapshot of his end of this hangar scene as well. It just looks fabulous. Okay, so from the Airfix Sig, we are going over to Ipswich. I don't know if you started noticing yet, but a lot of the stands are sort of very similar in terms of layout, having this sort of uh, cut wood design um, for sort of the backs. But I really like the basing on these. Uh, this F2 looked absolutely great. Like it really looks like it's taking off, doesn't it? It looks fantastic. And yeah, I thought they did a great job on this, this stand. Pennywise looking particularly menacing in the background there. This Hastings, Hastings being my uh, my favorite full propped aircraft of time. And Nimrod, which always makes me very sad to see as well. 
three minutes which we're going to the southern england airfields didn't know this is a thing but that i think it's sycamore looks absolutely gorgeous i love it i want to take it home i want to have it on my shelf they had the queen there as well we'll see another queen in a second which i just i didn't realize was there and it made me jump when i looked up because i was like panning around with my camera and you'll see it in a second oh there's the green <laughs> really made me uh, laugh but we're gonna get a close-up in there wow just look at that that looks real like that looks real so from there we're going over to the airport and aerodrome seg this i'll be honest not my forte not my cup of tea really but you know i want to get it for everyone else because some people are going to really enjoy seeing this you potentially can be at the show this hurts and wizard in particular looked great now i didn't know the name of this and i feel really bad because one of my friends was actually there um and i talked to them and i i just this was probably i'll be honest this is the standout table for me like overall this is probably my favorite because it just it was just dioramas and all the dioramas looked fantastic there wasn't anything that looked like it had sort of old that'll do everything was done to absolute perfection it was very varied in terms of what each diorama represented and um yeah these huts were all done by one of my friends guy so shout out to guy as well <laughs> yeah sadly i didn't remember the name of the table see the saunders row flying jet prototype um they've got one in southampton's museum and this sort of blitz diorama just looked insane so from there we're going over to wallingford another very varied table a couple of tiger schemes we're going to notice as we go across and I'm in 29 that has that digital camouflage. Got interrupted, however, by Chewy <laughs> and a Jedi. And uh, I ended up getting my picture taken with them. I was really happy with that. They looked so good. They were, ev honestly, everyone at the show was so lovely and just <laughs> the perfect. Oh my God. Chewy was like so sassy. Chewy's a queen. Can we just appreciate that? Chewy is a queen like no no cat but like, just a queen <laughs> that was my favorite just having chewy's fur all over my face it was very very amusing but yeah thank you both i didn't get your names i'm so sorry but thank you both for being there <laughs> just wounded store trooper <laughs> okay we're over to sutton coalfield now my camera looks a bit rubbish on this display and i'm sorry because uh, i didn't do you justice i sort of screwed you over with my camera work i'm sorry Sutton coalfield please forgive me um obviously i've got a close-up of a couple like the jaguar which i thought looked really really well presented an aircraft that is sadly no longer with us and i think has been retired with every air armor it was with i think india was the last operator of the type if i remember correctly a hungarian he trouble on there as well just sneaking in below the frame I have no idea anything about this boat, but it just spoke to me. It looked spectacular. I would not have the patience for that. So yeah, this Horton 229 or Gotha 229, perhaps I should say, had sort of two in a hangar and being worked on and they just really spoke to me. R2D2 decided they wanted to speak to me however as well. <laughs> I just thought I popped up behind me. Oh, so cool seeing all of these just, just going around, you know, the whole show. Okay, over on to Wolverhampton here, and you can see my eyes are instantly drawn to this red arrow with trailing blue smoke. They look fantastic. This was another pretty varied display. Lots of different scales, but also different eras. A lot of Japanese aircraft, which again, I know nothing of <laughs> Japanese aircraft. Sing with ships. So all I can really say is they looked amazing. One of the members was there though, and they built all these dioramas of, um, I think they were all of the Spanish Civil War, if I remember correctly. They'd finished one of them very recently, which I think was this one, and these was, I thought, were so unique and just very, very special. I thought these were absolutely fantastic. Uh, some of the best dioramas in the entire show, to be perfectly honest. Okay, we're over here looking at Thames Valley and a short spell fast, which is a beast of an aircraft. <laughs> it, that was 170 second scale, if I'm not mistaken. It just gives you a sense of proportion of how giant that aircraft is. Swedish Hunter in the back there. Yeah, a great, great display. After that though, we're going over to 
uh, sort of Sig 144. Don't know if you can work out what their theme is. <laughs> Obviously everything's in 144. And uh, I love this. I it It's so accessible, I guess, because it's, it's a lot, some of it's cheaper in 144 than it would be in 170 seconds. Some of it's way more expensive as well, actually. But you, for someone who's like me, who lives in a really sort of limited space, you can fit a lot more of these out than you can in say 170 second, 148. So it is a great scale to work in. They did a great job of showing why you should consider with that scale as well. Now the what ifs is, well again, it's what it says on the tin, much like the Cold War one was. It's a lot of aircraft that are in what if schemes. So fictional schemes or a aircraft that didn't quite come to pass or didn't come out of the drawing board phases. And it's it's always a really lovely display to see. I think, if I'm honest, I don't think this was their best one, but it's still fantastic, which just speaks volumes about the quality of them. Now, obviously they've lost one of their members and it's really sad to see that, but it's good that the SIG is still carrying, carrying on in their legacy. I don't really know how to move on from that sadness, to be honest. But I don't know, when I was filming it, I, I, I didn't know if I should include it, but I just felt wrong not doing it, so yeah. I'm sorry to you guys who obviously lost someone really close to you. So anyway, talking about what is meant to be the Great War SIG. Telford's display, I think, was obviously just a notch above the display at Milton Keynes. But this is again still spectacular. World War I aircraft have really bizarre paint schemes. A lot of really great dioramas on this display as well. Just fantastic. The Great War is something that you never see and it's great to see them here. The South Atlantic group, I'm getting really behind with the narration now, wow. <laughs> the South Atlantic group, again, I know nothing about boats. There's a lot of them here. Obviously a couple of Harriers dotted about. This focus on the Falklands conflict. This one in the centre I think was my favourite just because it had so much motion. Motion in the ocean. So I ended up getting an overhead picture of that one as well that you're going to see now. Because, yeah, I just, I don't know, it, it just really looks like it has a lot of motion to it. So, under new management. So, this is aircraft in, I, I think some of them are just purely fictional schemes, but a lot a lot of them are like, almost like captured schemes. Um, obviously a lot of aircraft were sort of used in that way. But yeah, this this is a really, oh, always a really pleasant scheme. That was my favourite there, we'll see it in more detail in a moment. So there's a... Dornier Arrow, an SM-79, a Narado, a couple of ME-262s here, or the Avia Alternative in a French version. Yeah, this uh, P-38 really stole, stole, the stole the show for me. <laughs> okay, so we're here at Brampton, focusing on the Lancaster in the middle. They've got this, again, Ukrainian, I think, SU-27 at the back. This very early aircraft, looks like it, is it a Blarion? Yeah, Blario. I just, I don't know how people do this. Like, it just looks amazing. Honestly, I think this is part of the same display, if I'm remembering. It looked separate, but I think it's the same display. If I'm wrong, I'm so sorry. It looks amazing. I love like the circus colors of early United States aircraft. So this is the Mediterranean Operations, or Mediterranean Theatre of Operations sake. So obviously it's anything and everything around the Mediterranean, so glad I got to see some French aircraft there, because wildly underrepresented. Again, some Spanish Civil War, which look brilliant. Okay, jumping over to the New Zealand SIG. They have a CT4 though, like the one I built, which I'm quite... That. I hope they get one at some point because that would be really cool to see. Especially if it's built better than my one, because which wouldn't be very hard. <laughs> so French Air Force sick here as well. A lot of French aircraft here, which is always lovely to see. I adore French aviation. Obviously not everything here is French designed, but at least in French markings. And that's a 510 there, if I'm not mistaken. 
yeah, a really lovely, quite limited in space display. We've got the Mirage stick as well right next to it, very suitably. Compared to Delphid, obviously this is a much smaller display because uh, they had a large celebration uh, across an entire row for uh, them previously, so a lot more limited. This is Models for Heroes. Beautiful aircraft carrier. Overall, the theming of this is great, and you see another one of those tank ball things that I mentioned earlier. Tank spheres, I guess. This was probably my favourite though. I just love these sort of layouts that just look fabulous. Over at the Gulf War, um, one of them is really going <laughs> to be in video, so I hope they don't mind sort of their bottom third torso being in. But yeah, they're a lovely seg, very well laid out. Love the theming, love that they've got the whole like desert camo underneath as well. It just really added and brought the whole table to absolutely together. Here at Racing Lines, I knew nothing about any of this, so again, I wanted to feature you. I don't know anything about cars. It's not something that particularly interests me, but Pop Off Queen, you did absolutely amazing, particularly on this Pink Panther one. Like, oh my god. I want this in my house. <laughs> okay, we're at Wizbatch. Wizbatch? Is that how you say it? Don't know. This is my favourite one here. I thought this looked absolutely stunning. You don't see it on camera as much. There is so much glitter on this. I actually uh, spoke to the, I think it was the person who made it, or one of the members at least, and just said how much I appreciated. There was so much glitter on there. It just, it was stunning. It looks so amazing. So much creativity. So this is Mid Sussex's uh, display. Love the two Daleks there. It's in the very old scheme of white and gold as well. Yeah, lovely little little table. This was, I think if I remember correctly, this was up on the balcony. Did the top balcony first for some reason. I think it's because I just felt so unhealthy I'd go upstairs once and <laughs> not go further up. Yeah, great, great layout. Star Trek's having an invasion here as well, along with some Batman. And this, if I'm not mistaken, is West Kent. This felt quite squished. Not their fault, obviously. They've just got a lot of large models that are quite hard to fit in. I do like that they have the little perspex at the front there protecting them. This is West Norfolk. Love that pilot, it's so good. The posing of it just looks fantastic. This little cute Arab, oh my god, it looks so cute. <laughs> Tiny little ship next to this massive <laughs> aircraft as well, just made me chuckle. This is the Churchill's egg, didn't even know this was a thing. But yeah, just Churchill's. Lots and lots of Churchill's, even now I know what it is. <laughs> this is uh, Middleton Cheney, if I've said that right, if I haven't, I'm sorry. This was stunning. They have a, it was all the Games Workshops, Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring figures and they had like Lord of the Rings music. Ugh, honestly, this was one of my favourite things I saw all day. And then to counter it, they had the <laughs> Doctor Who ones. I, I love this. Guys, you, you, you stole my hearts with that. And then we have Sleepy Hollow. Hello. <laughs> Over to Fenland and Spalding here. It's a little Westland at the back. A whirlwind, I think it is. I was just saying how much I think the Dorniers always look quite goofy compared to like the, the Heinkel and the Junkers Some ve vehicles as well that I don't know anything about. And then we're off to Farnborough. And this was insane. I don't know if this is like a million kits, if it's scratch built, but my god. <laughs> this thing was huge and stunning. It won a prize as well, and like, not surprisingly, and then all this was the other side of it, like, what the actual hell, Farnborough, like, you just did insane this year. <laughs> Over at Avon, no di giant dinosaurs to be uh, seen here though. <laughs> but yeah, no, another very plain rich environment, loving the Buccaneer, I think that's a 148 scale. Yeah, it just looks fantastic. Okay, so we're over to Belvoir. Um, I have no idea if I've said that safe name correctly, I really apologise if I haven't. But yeah, this is a really colourful display, those vehicles at the top end just were really, really well done. So we're over at the Marvel Sick. 
Um, if you're seeing this again, hello, yes, <laughs> they remembered me because I love Gambit. Gambit will always be my childhood obsession <laughs> and I love him and in my brain I will one day still end up married to Gambit. Really happy to see you guys are like fully on the modelling circuit. Telford was my first time seeing you and it's nice to see something that brings in people who aren't into like military or cars. Marvel is such a large franchise I hope it can help bring a lot more younger people into the hobby. So I've obviously got two pictures of Gambit because he is my husband. But don't worry, I got some of the other X-Men and Loki. This doesn't make sense thematically. And the Green Goblin. <laughs> We're over to Thurok? Thurok? British names are silly, but I hope I've said your modelling club's name correctly. And it seems I was rushing to get a drink because we have Newark here as well, which I didn't spend anywhere near as much time of. Same with Thurok, so I do apologise. Um, but yeah, I. I seem to have rushed past these ones, so I'm really sorry I didn't get as much as I probably should have. Got one of my old f friends here, Stoke on Trent Model Club, with Nemesis models as well. That's at the back there. Always a fantastic turnout with the Stoke crew. Not that I'm biased or anything, because <laughs> I'm friends with a lot of people there. <laughs> to me, this is another club that shows that dioramas are really getting more and more popular because they don't seem any sign of stopping. It just seems to be more and more of them every single time. This is Rubicon uh, models over here. Just thought I'd show them off as well. They are linked to the Stoke Club uh, somewhat. But I uh, thought I'd show off some of their work here. So you can check them out on their website that you can see. There we go, Rubicon models to code UK. Um, I didn't take as much as this because I was basically talking to my, my friends over behind, so apologies that this is really, really quite poor camera work. <laughs> so we're over at Letchworth here. Again, I think this is another one of the ones I didn't take as much as I probably should have, but that giant typhoon looked fantastic. Lots of figurines again, which is great. I thought I got more footage of that um, <laughs> by playing with the camels, but sadly I did not. It was all out of focus, <laughs> so unfortunate consequence of me using a new camera, it does seem. So we're over at Portsmouth now, that uh, gun carrier that's obviously still a bit of a work in process, but looks great. Some giant bombs there as well, a radar truck, and yep, yeah, I only plays War Thunder. Probably just died inside. <laughs> oh dear. And then a doodle bug as well. A V1 flying bomb. Getting a bit behind on my aeration again, but this is uh, Locate and Cement. And the one I didn't get quite as much footage of as I probably should have. This looks stunning though. I'll be honest, I was getting quite tired by the end of the day, or the end of me walking around, so didn't get quite as much as I should have. Another tank ball said they were the trend of 2022. I think this is Essex, if I remember correctly. Um, or at least that's why I've got it down on my list. I hope it is. But a lovely, lovely little display. I love the splinter scheme on that. Oh, and Salisbury, the tornado. I didn't get anywhere near as much as I should have. That tornado was screaming for attention. But this mosquito restoration diorama just really just make, takes you <laughs> from the, the entire rest of the table. I'm sorry, the table was amazing, but that diorama was spectacular. Riven Hall here. Um, I don't know if I've seen these guys at a show before, but that table was really, really well presented. So we're over here looking at Lincoln now. And it makes me a bit sad because it makes me think of my grandma who passed away a couple of years ago. But again, I love Spider-Man sitting there in the middle, protecting over all of the aircraft and helicopters and vehicles that were assembled around them. Peter again. <laughs> sad, but not nothing to do with you guys, just for me. But as a person, well, Apple are just hiding under there. Again, this engine work, look at that. I could never, like literally, I don't have the patience, I could never. But you pop off, honestly, that looks insane. Spitfire and a hurricane up there as well. And 
for any Studio Ghibli fans. You'll love it. Okay, so we are now over to North Essex, if I've got this right. Um, this aircraft carrier, I could not do all the aircraft on that. Respect for it, just having the sheer will to get through that. I love the layout of models of the books. It's a really clever way of presenting your models um, as opposed to just doing like a base. It just looks really good. The splinter scheme vegan, by the way, was incredible. It says Bedford um, District, and this, yep, that is lit up. I'm not even kidding. Like, wow. <laughs> Some people have so much talent, it makes me sick, honestly. You just. Oh, and then the uh, display typing in the scheme that I frankly think is the ugliest one the RF has ever chosen. But that's it's still a great model. And that was a really cute Daddy and Son Christmas build. <laughs> I wish my dad would build a model with me. <laughs> this is uh, Spruz RS. Um, my friend Marcus is in this as well. Spruz RS have a great selection. Again, cars I know nothing about, but respect. I think this is Marcus's MiG-29, if I remember correctly, in the Digi camo. And I did take a picture of that other model, the isometric Blum Voss, but it was out of focus, so that's all you're going to get of it, I'm afraid, but it looked fantastic. The movie and TV say here, this just makes me smile. I mean, like, The Incredibles and Batman, just, it's cute. It's just a cute little table. If you're not smiling at that, there's something wrong. And I wasn't sure of the last two, and I don't know if I just was really blind and missed the names. But they were like two tables, I just had no idea who they were. But yeah, <laughs> just two tables. No idea who they were. Um, I think one of them might have been Swindon. I th yeah, that wraps it up, that was Milton Keynes 2020. What a show. Bloody hell. Hope you enjoyed everyone. Bye. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed what you saw here today to see more content as it comes. You can also follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash to watch me play these games live and chat with me. See you later. Bye.